Sodium is such a reactive metal that it reacts very quickly with water. The heat from the reaction melts the sodium, which is why you can see it appears as a ball rolling across the surface of the water. Hydrogen gas is also produced in the reaction, along with the alkali sodium hydroxide. You can see that the amount of sodium decreases as the reaction proceeds, and eventually it disappears. Magnesium is a less reactive metal than sodium. It doesn't react very quickly with water, but it does react with steam. We're producing the steam by heating some wool at the bottom of the tube, which is soaked in water. And once the steam is being produced, we can then heat the magnesium to get the reaction going. This reaction produces hydrogen, and you can see the hydrogen burning at the end of the glass tube, which is inserted into the rubber bung. The product of the reaction is magnesium hydroxide, which you can see here as a white powder. Here we're going to try and do the same reaction with copper. Again, we're generating steam by heating some wool which is soaked in water. But even after several minutes of heating, we still see no evidence of a reaction. Copper does not react with steam. Here you can see sodium's position in the reactivity series. A reactivity series is a list of metals in order of their reactivity. The most reactive metals are at the top, and the least reactive metals are at the bottom. Sodium and potassium both undergo a very fast reaction with water, although potassium reacts more violently than sodium. Magnesium is a less reactive metal than sodium. In fact, we showed the reaction with steam because the reaction with water is so slow that you don't really see anything happening. And in the case of copper, this is a metal which is very low down on the reactivity series and doesn't react with either water or steam. And the key thing to recognise here is that different metals have different reactivities and we can look for patterns in reactivity which help us to predict whether or not reactions will occur. We can use a reactivity series to predict the outcome of displacement reactions. More reactive metals should displace less reactive metals from their compounds. Let's consider an example. Here we have a piece of magnesium, and here we have a piece of copper. Here we have some copper sulphate solution in a test tube, and here we have some magnesium sulphate solution in a test tube. Let's take a look at the reactivity series to help us to work out if reactions will occur in either case. As you can see, magnesium is above copper in the reactivity series, so we would expect magnesium to be able to displace copper from its compounds. So we should see a reaction between magnesium and copper sulphate, with magnesium displacing copper. This will be seen with copper particles being formed in the test tube. In the other case, copper is below magnesium in the reactivity series, so copper should not be able to displace magnesium from magnesium sulphate. Hence we should see no reaction. Let's see what really happens. There's immediate evidence of a reaction occurring between magnesium and copper sulphate in the left-hand tube but not a lot appears to be happening in the right-hand tube. Let's take a closer look at that copper sulphate solution and magnesium. And here you can see there are particles of a brown solid being formed, which is copper metal. You should be able to write a word equation for this. If we take a closer look at the other tube, however, you can see that nothing has happened at all. There is no reaction. So it appears that both of our predictions were correct. And here you can see word and symbol equations for this reaction. Finally, you should now be able to use the reactivity series to decide whether or not any sort of displacement reaction will take place.